The PSVR 2 is finally here, and by now, hundreds and thousands of you helmet heads out there will be sporting lovely red imprints on your beautiful faces from the headset's visor and stroke, or brand new wounds on your hands from accidentally punching furniture and walls in VR. And I should know, because I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and currently, I'm the proud owner of both of those things. Thanks to the fact that I reviewed the PlayStation VR 2 for Eurogamer, I've been able to try out pretty much every single one of the 40 plus PSVR 2 launch titles that are out for the system so far, and I've whittled those experiences down to my top 11 PSVR 2 launch games that I just can't stop putting my face inside. Because, you know, 10's just too much of a normal number for me, so had to go one better. So join me as I count down my top 11 PSVR 2 launch games and, once you've watched it, let us know what your top PSVR 2 launch games are in the comments below. Runner won't be for everyone, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure how long it'll keep me interested for, as it feels like it'll be quite samey all the way through. But for now at least, I'm really digging this 90s anime-inspired action game that's part on-rail shooter, part racer. The concept for Runner is pretty simple. You straddle what basically amounts to Canada's bike from Akira, but with added guns, as you race down a neon highway with police cars, bikes and drones hot on your heels. Or should that be wheels? Yeah, yes, it definitely should have been wheels. Damn, a rare pun fail from your boy in there. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, Runner. This is arcade simplicity at its finest, and once you get accustomed to the slightly awkward control scheme, the feeling of rocketing along a road, blasting battle bots out of the sky as you swerve to avoid approaching vehicles is pretty damn awesome. There's a lovely feeling of speed here, and when you're in the zone, Runner truly makes you feel like you're living out your anime action hero fantasies. It's not perfect though, the rate of enemy spawns is very inconsistent, so sometimes you're left twiddling your thumbs for ages, while other times you get swarmed. It's also fairly janky, with enemies straight up vanishing from the roads, or just missing the track altogether when they jump in from spawning. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, it does feel like it could get repetitive fairly quickly. That said, I'm still very much enjoying jumping in for 10 to 15 minutes at a time for a quick burn of the rubber and a shoot of the guns. And here's a tip for you, for maximum Neo Tokyo style immersion, mute the in-game music and play Runner with track one of the Akira soundtrack turned up as loud as possible for some seriously cool vibes. I only recently started playing the Light Brigade, and whilst initially I wasn't that impressed, it's now really growing on me, and I reckon with a few more goes, it'll be one that I return to time after time. Like Runner, this won't have a wide appeal to it, but if, like me, you loved playing in death on the original PSVR, I definitely recommend giving this brutal roguelike shooter a go. Set in some kind of dreamlike scenario and featuring World War II era weapons that are weighted and reloaded in realistic manners, the Light Brigade is almost incomprehensible when you first play it. The foggy, low res visuals make it hard to work out what's going on around you. The weapon trinkets and tarot card unlockables are confusing and ill explained, as is the whole praying malarkey that lets you highlight nearby enemies through the mist, and there are quite a few performance issues in regards to frame rate. Still, even with these negative points, there's something really Moorish about the Light Brigade, and after my first couple of runs, when things had clicked and I started to unlock extra weapon upgrades, character class classes and magic wands, I felt that familiar just one more go urge that I get from all of my favourite roguelikes. If you can see past its faults, some of which could be solved with a patch, some of which from repeated play, this challenging shooter will give you one of those uniquely immersive PSVR 2 experiences that you've been praying for.
Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition is a game of two halves. On one side, it's a dull talk at you fest where you have to twiddle your thumbs while a Star Wars character with a cheesy voice spouts nonsense at you for ages. And on the other, it's a gorgeous Star Wars fantasy made real that allows you to run rampant with a bunch of movie authentic blasters by your side. Its quest routes are on full show with the simplistic gameplay and puzzles, but the enhancements allowed by the PSVR 2 make certain moments in the game look absolutely gorgeous. And this makes it one of the best Star Wars VR games I've ever played, although it's still quite far behind Star Wars Squadrons in my opinion. If you're looking for a great introduction to the world of VR that transports you to an out-of-this-world but familiar experience, you can't do wrong with Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. It does get a bit repetitive, mind, so I doubt there'll be much want for a replay, but while you're in it for the first time, you'll certainly feel the force. Get the double pack of Moss Books 1 and 2 in your life and you'll soon be having the family-friendly adventure of your lifetime, because the adventures of Quill are as close to a fairy tale come to life as you could possibly experience without, I don't know, cosplaying as Tinkerbell and dropping acid at Disney World. I've played Moss on both PC VR and PSVR 1 before, but the PSVR 2 version is the definitive edition in my opinion. The haptics add some great little touches and the accuracy of the headset and sense controller tracking means that you won't have any of those drift-based aggravations that you might have experienced when playing with a move controller. And all of Moss's little dioramas look incredible in 4K HDR. Don't get me wrong, they looked stunning on the original PSVR 2, but here they're so much crisper and detailed and this just brings that magic to life even more. The puzzles are imaginative, the combat is fun and not too challenging, and the story is as sweet as my sweet cheeks. And it all comes together to create an experience that you'll remember forever. I've said it before, and I'll say it again now because I love puns, but Moss is a must-buy for all PSVR 2 owners. And the same can be said for its squeakle, Moss Book 2. Heh, <laughs> two puns for the price of ones. That's like when you buy Moss Book 1 and Moss Book 2 in a bundle, where it's not the price of one, it's still a bit more, but you get a bit cheap, but you, never mind. Next. Everyone knows how Tetris works, but not everyone knows how Tetris works in VR. And how does Tetris work in VR, Ian, you may be thinking? Well, it works by transporting you to a series of transcendent trips through space and time and nature and science and basically everything else in between, all while you affect the sublime soundtrack with every little movement of your tetrominoes. Tetrominoes is the collective name for the shapes in Tetris, by the way. I wasn't trying to make a rude joke for once, honest. I've heard a lot of people say the word Zen in my lifetime, but it wasn't until I played Tetris Effect in VR for the first time that I truly experienced Zen for myself. With some Pulse 3D headphones on, volume up loud, and the headset on your face, you will not fail to be absorbed by this game's magnificent vibes. Oh, and it also gets really bloody tricky too, and that brings about some incredible seat of your pants moments as the speed of the block drops increase and your tower nears the top of the screen. I honestly think that if you can play Tetris Effect in VR without feeling something wonderful inside yourself, then, well, you should probably call a doctor because I think you might be dead. Actually, a doctor wouldn't be too much use to you if you were dead, would they? Um, a mortician then, maybe? I don't know. Better than a bin man. Kayak VR Mirage is like going on holiday, except you don't have to pack anything and you don't have to fanny around in an airport and then wait for hours for a delayed plane. 
The photorealistic visuals brought on by this cracking kayak sim are some of, if not the best VR visuals I've ever experienced. And it's incredibly easy to lose yourself in its chill vibes as you paddle amongst some of the most serene scenery I've ever seen. Hurry. There's not a huge amount to this game beyond some time trials and a free roam mode that lets you soak up the atmosphere, but believe me when I tell you that you'll still cherish every moment that you're inside it. The paddling mechanics are easy to pick up, the views are spectacular, and with real-time multiplayer and open world updates planned, there should be a bit of life left in it too. Shame I can't say the same thing about that poor penguin though. Oh, turns out I don't know my own strength. Whoopsie. It's dead. I only tapped it a little bit. If you were to ask me which game I think new owners of the PSVR 2 should get over any other, I'd probably say Horizon Call of the Mountain even though it's not my favourite PSVR 2 game by a long shot now that I've played the games that feature further on up this list. I've already covered Horizon Call of the Mountain in multiple live streams and a review video, so I don't need to say too much more about it other than this game has been tailor-made to show off the PSVR 2 headset and the Sense controllers in the most spectacular ways possible, and it achieves that and then some. Sure, the gameplay gets a bit dull and repetitive after a while, and the combat feels a bit too restricted too, but even so, I had more wow moments during my first hour of playing this game than I probably had playing standard flat games during the whole of last year. I've played Resident Evil Village more times than I can count now, but the PSVR 2 version still blows my mind. It's leagues ahead of the flat screen to VR mod that I played on VR Corner a year or so ago as it adds so many extra features like dual wielding, manual reloading and the ability to physically interact with objects, albeit in a slightly limited way. What really makes Resi Village stand out amongst the crowd, though, is its incredible visuals, which are some of the best you can get in the PSVR 2 at the moment. This is a AAA game, lovingly ported to VR, and literally nothing has been lost in the process. If anything, it's all been improved, and it just goes to show that, if they wanted, video game developers could give gamers the best of both worlds by creating flat and VR versions of their titles. If you've never played Resi Village before, you are in for a terrifying treat for the senses, and it will be one of the most immersive horror games you've ever played. If you have already played Resident Evil Village, though, going through it all again will only enhance the experience for you. And of course, you'll also get to meet Lady D in VR as well, which is a sight that will make literally anyone go weak at the knees. Hmm. Pavlov VR is one of the PC's best-selling VR games of all time, and for good reason. It's a hell of a lot of fun if you're into multiplayer shooter games. There's a rather steep learning curve when it comes to playing Pavlov VR because it prides itself on realism, so every gun in the game is accurately modelled and therefore needs to be reloaded physically in the exact ways that you'd do it in real life, and this leads to a lot of fumbling at first, but experimenting with all of the weapons in the shooting range before you go online does help a lot, and most importantly, it is immense amounts of fun. Seriously, sometimes I'll just pop into the shooting range to mess around and do a bit of target practice rather than play any of the game itself. The realism of it all makes even this simple area so much fun to mess around in. Online multiplayer is where Pavlov shines though, and there are loads of modes to try, including standard deathmatches, search and destroy, gun game, a fully fledged zombie survival mode, and even a World War II tank v tank deathmatch mode. This is definitely one for the more hardcore VR heads amongst us, but if you're after some visceral blood pumping combat in VR, you won't get better than this until, I don't know, maybe Firewall Ultra releases sometime later in the year.
Pistol Whip is such an unfathomably cool experience to me, and it's by far my favourite rhythm action game out there. I even prefer it to Beat Saber, which is like the king of VR games, so that's got to be saying something, right? I played loads of Pistol Whip on the Quest, but on the PSVR 2 with the added headset haptics and adaptive triggers, it feels like the best this game has ever been, and I just can't get enough of shooting my way through my favourite tracks with the new dual wield mode activated. To score big points in Pistol Whip, you have to shoot in time to the beat, whilst also dodging incoming bullets and obstacles that lie in your path as you slide along some very stylish, retro-futuristic environments. It turns what could have been a standard arcade shooter into something akin to The Matrix mixed with a music video, and once you start to feel the groove, pistol whipping nearby enemies will make you feel like the ultimate badass. When I first played Pistol Whip, there were about 8 music tracks on offer, but now there's around 20, plus a couple of 5 level campaigns thrown in there too, both of which have some wonderful little twists to them. Seriously, I love playing this game. It's incredible value for money, and it gives you an experience and feeling that only VR could provide. When it comes to delivering pure, forget-the-real-world immersion, no other game on this list comes as close as Gran Turismo 7. Even though I'm in no way a racing game fan at all, I just can't stop myself from diving into this one whenever possible, just to feel the incredible sense of speed and place that Gran Turismo 7 brings. From the lush, ultra-detailed vehicle interiors to the gorgeous recreations of real-world racetracks, GT7 is a visual treat, and thundering around its racetracks and speedways is a thrill that every PSVR 2 owner should experience. I've only played the game with the DualSense controller, and even then I get totally lost in it all, so God only knows how immersive this game would be when sat in one of those fancy racing chair things with the pedals and steering wheel and stuff. I don't know what comes with them, I'm not rich enough to own one of them. I, whatever they come with, I'd probably cry because it'd be super realistic. While Kayak VR Mirage makes you feel like you're paddling a real kayak in the real world, once you've paddled one kayak, you've pretty much paddled them all. GT7, on the other hand, makes you feel like you're able to drive like almost every car in the world ever, be they a crappy little mini or an ultra-futuristic supercar. GT7 really is the definitive PSVR 2 experience, and whether you're a fan of doing a drive in real life or not, this game will take your breath away, 0-60 style, in under 6 seconds. And that's your lot, friendos. I've been Ian Higton, and this has been my list of my top 11 PSVR 2 launch titles. But which ones do you love stuffing in your eye holes? Let us know your favourites in the comments below, like this video if you've enjoyed it, and subscribe to Eurogamer for almost daily videos about video games and plenty more PSVR 2 coverage on Ian's VR Corner every Sunday right here on this channel. Oh, and do check out some of these other VR videos that are on screen and clickable right now if you want more of me and my VR-loving shenanigans in your life. Which, you know, will totally make your life better. Honestly, don't believe me? Click on one and try. It, it's like uh, medicine, but for your eyes and your brain. Bye!